Hi everyone. I wanted to make a video today on my ink sampling process. So um, I received some inks for Christmas, including these six. I also received Diamine Holly from the Blue Advent calendar selection. Um, so basically in 2019, Diamine released, I might flip between saying Diamine and Diamine. So sorry if I do that. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it and I don't, I'm not consistent with it. Um, in 2019, at the end of the year, I think it was in October, Diamine released um, an advent calendar, basically 25 tiny little bottles of ink. I think they were 10 mils. And well, one of them actually, day 25, was a 30 mil bottle of ink. And they were new specially designed inks with Christmassy names that are um, beautiful shimmery sheeny or just normal inks or both shimmer and sheen together and I've got two of them but I'm not going to show you that today I'll do a, a different video on my shimmery and sheeny inks but today I wanted to do some ink sampling of these six I've got Diamine, Diamine, Green Black, Mombodo's Hat, Aurora Borealis, Crimson, Sapphire Blue and Monaco Red. And the reason I chose this, these ones, um, because I've got quite a lot of the little 30ml bottles of Diamine, Diamine ink already. Um, I chose Aurora Borealis because one of my favourite singers is called Aurora. She's amazing. She's a young lady from Norway. Uh, she's about 24 now, I think, and she's absolutely amazing. I love her music. So I thought I have to buy that. And plus, I love green blue inks. And then the others, I didn't have much time. Well, I thought I didn't have much time to actually make a selection because the 10% off deal I thought was ending at midnight and it was like two minutes to midnight and I was just like just chuck a few into the basket that I don't already have so I didn't make a very educated decision on them but they're colours I don't have and to be honest I'm kind of edging towards collecting all of the diamine, diamine um, colours that I like or at least the ones that I don't not like if you understand what I mean I don't like um all of the browns, I don't really like um, all of the blues, I certainly don't like the greys so I'm basically going to buy all of the other ones that I like and because they're only like £2 something each and I can buy several of them at a time and add to my collection at birthdays and Christmas so um, yes and then every time I get some I'm going to need to do ink sampling so let's look at that now let's move these out of the way and in this tin are my ink sample sheets. So I think I've done it for every ink I own so far. And it's really simple. They are watercolour paper, just from a cheap watercolour pad that I cut into the same sort of size square. Some of them are taller than the others, but that doesn't really matter. And I used a paintbrush. I looked at different videos and how people do their um, ink samples. Some people use a cotton bud and I tried that and I didn't like the texture that it came out with on the watercolour paper. So I tried it with a paintbrush and I was really pleased with that. So that's basically what I've done. And then I write the name at the bottom with a black pen. I don't use a dip pen a glass dip pen for sampling for this particular oh my camera's slipping that's why I have to keep moving my hand um, I don't use a glass um, dip pen for this because it comes out really thick um, the nib isn't very fine so I'm gonna have to keep on adjusting the camera so I'm apologizing for that in advance I don't know what's wrong with my tripod um, so I just write the name, I can't remember whether that's blue or blue black, so I'll write that on there when I look at the bo bottle. Um, so I just basically have used a paintbrush and I will demonstrate how I did that in a minute. And these are really useful. 
I'm not 100% sure if the colour that they come out with when I use the paintbrush is representative of the colour that they come out as on my paper. For example, Noodler's Black Swan in English Roses, I certainly think it, it looks different when I'm using it in a pen. So what I'm going to do is either on the back of the uh, watercolour paper or on a separate piece of paper and then stick it to the back here because I don't think that the watercolour paper is really a useful um, sort of paper to, or um, you know, this sort of, it's kind of paper, it's kind of not really card, it's, it's quite, th it's not a high quality watercolour paper. Um, it's relatively thick but it's not like a normal paper, like a writing paper. I don't think it's a good um, representative paper to use to be able to um, see what the colour looks like in a pen because the watercolour paper isn't like a normal paper. So I, um, I may write on some Rhodia or Clairefontaine or maybe just on a normal quality paper to see what my pens what my inks look like when they really come out of a pen and then I will have both the um, swatch which is a um, representative um, sample of the colour when it's shown in all of its intensity and then also the, um, the actual writing example I'm looking at this one and realising that the colours aren't exactly representative. Please don't use this video to see what colours of ink look like in real life. Um, this uh, Diamine Wild Strawberry is looking a lot more orange in the camera here than it is in real life. It's more um, pinky red. So... Um, I'm not 100% sure if these colours are reliable for when I'm trying to um, look at what colours really look like, the ink colours really look like, but I do love the swatches and um, I love looking through them. Me and my mum looked through them earlier to have a look at what colours we liked for um, painting the living room. Because obviously these aren't paint colours, but you can look at them and go, no, I don't want that colour, and I do like the idea of that colour. and So it is a really useful resource. And I think if you wanted to do this yourself, then watch a couple of different videos. Don't just watch mine and go ahead and use my technique. Watch other people's videos. Watch um, maybe... Brian Goulet and other people, SBRE Brown, to see how they do their ink swatches because then you'll be able to educate yourself and hopefully your technique will be as close to the sort of um, the um, representative uh, colour that you want it to be. I'm quite happy with looking at these. I don't need to know exactly what colour my inks look like. I just need to sort of look at them and go, no, I don't want a bright blue this time. I'll have a deeper blue and just pick from there. Okay, so this is Diamond Green Black. It'll be interesting to see how this comes out because it is a dark ink and I'm not sure what this lighting is going to look like. Okay, so I'm saturating the brush um, hairs, or what they're called, and I've kind of um, got rid of some of the excess ink. And I'm going to start by just doing a, a large swatch and doing it until the ink runs out. Now I might touch it up, but what I'm doing is letting all of the saturated ink from the um, brush go into this top left corner and then letting the ink kind of run out of the brush in the bottom left uh, in this bottom area of this swatch because I want to see um, 
I think I can show you with this dye mine turquoise. I want to see what the colour looks like when it's quite opaque and what it looks like when it's uh, relatively pale because when you are um, looking at inks on your page you will notice that you have at the beginning of the line when you haven't used the um, pen for a couple of minutes you will have a darker colour and then as you carry on writing it will go lighter and then where it shades it will be uh, the darker colour. So I'm now going to do the second line of swatch and I'm going to go over it twice and that's going to be the darkest that the colour comes out. So I'm going to take less off the brush this time and I'm going to do another line and actually I don't think I need to do a second swatch on that one that has come out really dark. So I'm just getting rid of the, any more excess ink from my brush. I'm going to let that dry and that is probably going to take a while to dry because that was a lot of ink I just put down on that second one. And then I'm going to keep the ink bottle near it because I don't want to forget which ink it was. And I'm going to rinse out my brush and I want to show you that because um, when I was doing some swatching a few weeks ago, the ink was turning, uh, the water was turning really inky straight away and I kept having to go over to the sink and I didn't want to do that in this video because I don't want to have to keep leaving the camera. So I'm going to use um, two cups of water. This is my, one of my um, ink cleaning cups and um, so I'm going to do a sort of dirty rinse in this one and a clean rinse in this one and I've also got my old uh, toweling rag thing here um, in the UK we call them a flannel and so I'm going to dip my brush in there and as you can see the water is going dark green which means that if I were only using one cup of water the next um, inks might be contaminated because the water is now dark green and then I'm going to just try to get some of the excess colour off on that one rinse it again and as you can see the water hasn't changed too much so I think my technique is quite okay and then dry it off again and you can then observe what colour the white flannel goes and maybe rinse again I'm really sorry for this camera moving about all the time it's really off-putting I am actually holding it with my left hand and it is still moving and so I'm compensating for the movement and moving the camera again which is annoying so i'm very sorry for my lack of um good equipment and i was thinking that i wouldn't have to buy a new tripod because i've just got a mobile phone adapter for my tripod and maybe i will need to buy a new one okay next one i might not do all of them because the technique is there you don't need to see it for all of them See if this won't move. No, it's moving. Right, let's do this quickly so that I can not have to keep using a hand to stabilise. I've got two sheets there. Right, let's get rid of one. Okay, so this is Monbodo's hat, which is a purple, and I do like my purple inks. So I've dipped it in, I've removed some of the ink and And let it sort of run out of ink at the end of it. That's a really nice colour actually, but it is very similar to some of the other colours that Diamine do. And now I've dipped it again and I've left quite a lot of ink left on it. And that is um, more ink, but I'm going to just touch it up with a bit more to represent how dark that colour can go when you're writing with it. And it's um, drying, so I'm going to just write the name of the black, uh, the green black, the green black card. And I think that will be where I end the video because 
that's my technique and I don't have to show you it for all of them but if you want to adopt my technique that's absolutely fine and um oh wrong pen that's the blue one and I hope that it is a useful video I know I waffled a lot in that one but then I am a waffler okay this is the pen that I use it's my favorite non-fountain pen it's a Uniball iMicro and it's a 0.5 I believe yeah UB150 and it's waterproof fade proof um yeah waterproof and fade proof there we go let's see if you can see the color differentiation between oops the top one and the bottom one so <laughs> the bottom one is really dark really really dark it hasn't gone through to the other side which is great but i can feel that the the watercolor paper is still wet the oh it's got a bit wet can you see there on the edge that's a bit annoying but never mind um the top corner where i put the most ink down in this top one isn't actually that dark so i think it's quite a consistent color it might not have that much sh uh, shading to it I'm not 100% sure if you're interested in looking at any inks on um, you know for ink reviews and stuff I don't do them because I'm um, I just use inks for writing I don't really play with them that much uh, I recommend just googling the name of the ink and then looking up google images or any you know search engine but looking up the images because then you will get pictures of ink reviews people are really good on the internet at writing ink reviews um they basically have a piece of paper where they write about the ink so they might write about um how they feel about it what um the shading is like how waterproof it is how saturated the color is comparing it to other um, similar coloured inks, doing um, dry tests and seeing how um, how water affects it, that kind of thing. So do go on to um, Google Images and what it will do is give you some really good examples which will then put you through to people's blogs or the best place in my opinion is the Fountain Pen Network. And then once you've gone onto the Fountain Pen Network, which is a forum, with thousands and thousands of members um, you will then be able to see other people's opinions about that ink because then you can see people's comments below the post with the person's review uh, so the top color is a sort of dark green and the bottom color is a really dark green i don't know if it's ever going to get to this color when it's actually being used for writing but um the reason why I told you about the fountain pen reviews is because then you will be able to see what other people say about the shading ability of the ink. And also you will be able to see a sample of the writing because people actually use the ink to write the review. So yes, do go and have a look at people's opinions about those inks and uh, then you'll be able to see interesting things about the inks and uh, build on your knowledge there. But this um, ink swatching is a really good uh, way of being able to um, get a sort of overview of what inks you've got and um, know exactly what colours you've got in your collection because when you've got a large collection and the labels on some bottles aren't very obvious because before uh, I don't have one out at the moment but Diamine would write the name of the ink on the top here but you couldn't um, necessarily see the colour of the ink um, let me, uh, no I won't grab one out of the out of the uh, the drawers because it will take me away from the camera but um, one thing you could do actually is get some round dot label sticker things and and uh, paint some ink on the sticker and stick it onto the top of the lid 
that might be a good idea but another way of doing it and this is also a way of keeping an inventory inventory <laughs> however you want to say it, inventory of your inks is by doing the swatches and then keeping them safe in something like a cute little tin so sorry about the waffly video but if you've watched my videos before you know that's what you expect from me so thanks for watching bye